I mean, come on, guys. You know I have to start with Shining Star. Just listen to this bass line. Listen to it. And then when it kicks in, ha! Oh, yeah. ski ba dee ha ho za ba ba doo When you ski ba dee ba doo Shala wa la fa la foo. God, I love this fucking song. Shining Star by Earth, Wind, and Fire from their 1975 hit record, That's the Way of the World. It's also number 486 out of 500 on the 500 with Josh Adam Myers. Hello, everyone. I love you. Won't you tell me your names? My name is Josh Adam Myers. I am the King of Fleece, and I am leading you through this journey through Rolling Stone Magazine's top 500 albums list from five honey all the way down to numero uno, guys. Final show date, May 31st, 2028. So we are down to our final fucking episodes. Only 495 more to go, but God, are they good. I'm having the time of my life making these. I hope you guys are having a great time listening to them. Uh, I know I said it in the last one, but I love each and every one of you guys. We got a huge response from me doing the Monday morning podcast with Bill Burr. We got a whole bunch of new listeners, and I love you guys. Thank you for sending me all the messages about how much you're enjoying the show, my passion, because that's it, man. I, I Dude, I don't want to do anything besides this. I'm, I'm Everything else has gone to the to the back burner. This is all I give a shit about, and I'm having a great time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So people are asking why I'm the king of fleece, and I'll tell you guys, it has to go back to one of my good friends, Ryan Sickler and Jay Larson. They had a podcast called The Crab Feast. Now they have their own. Uh, Ryan is on The Honeydew on your mom's house studios, which I am a co-host of sometimes, and Jay has the through line. But when they had The Crab Feast, I told this story about how my great uncle died and he left me and my sister $40,000 each. I was 18 years old, right? I had never had money before. So I gave half the money to my parents, 20,000 so we could buy our house back because we were poor and uh, we had lost the house. But then I had 20,000 left. Dude, I spent like $3,000 on fleeces. Fleeces, whole bunch, Timberland, Nautica, Polo, I bought a whole bunch of fleeces because I was cold all the time. And then I did a bunch of drugs with the rest of the money. I went to Europe. But that is why I'm the king of fleece and you guys are part of the fleece army. So, my guest this week is probably one of the strongest, funniest comedians in the world. I love Wanda Sykes to death. Here's how I became friends with her. Like, there was a night I was at the Hollywood Improv and I was doing my buddy Avery Pearson's show, the 88 show, which is where comics do uh, stand up and then they sing a a new song that they wrote with Avery uh, to the audience. And it's a lot of fun. And Wanda Sykes and my, her friend uh, and co-worker and uh, co-owner of uh, Push It Productions, Paige Hurwitz, were in the audience and... I performed, and they had known me from when I tried out for Last Comic Standing, and I go up there, and I do my stand-up, and I sing, and me and Wanda, after the show, talk for a little bit, and then that was that. But then I went in and did the main room at at the improv, and I finished my set, and Craig Robinson was like a special guest, and Craig goes up, and he is like, let's party, everybody. And so he starts playing music. And then he brings Wanda up on stage, and they start singing songs. And then out of nowhere, Craig goes, is Josh still in here? And then I'm like, fuck yeah, I am. And I walk on stage, and then me, Craig, and Wanda, we just sang so much shit for like an hour and a half. Wanda and Craig and I had the time of our lives. The audience enjoyed it, and it's just a blast, guys. If you don't know who Wanda Sykes is, maybe you've seen her on The New Adventures of Old Christine. Maybe you've seen her on Curb Your Enthusiasm with Larry David. Maybe you've seen her on Broad City. Maybe you've seen her on Blackish. Or maybe you've seen one of her incredible comedy specials. But guess what? We get Wanda Sykes for the next hour. And I couldn't be more excited to break down this record with her because when she did the goddamn Comedy Jam, she sang an Earth, Wind, and Fire song. Don't forget to listen to the end of the podcast where we're going to spotlight a new artist that is directly influenced by Earth, Wind, and Fire. 
Also, guys, rate, review, and most importantly, subscribe to The 500 on your favorite podcast-getting platform. Follow me at Josh Adam Myers on all social media. Email the podcast at 500podcast at gmail.com. And for all things 500, go to our website, the500podcast.com. With that being said, here we go with number 486 out of 500 with That's the Way of the World by Earth, Wind, and Fell. Wanda Sykes, no matter Wanda Sykes, mm. she's a Wanda Sykes in the Wamp Ranch. Oh, nobody's ever joined in. <laughs> Nobody has ever joined in. Maybe people just actually look in awe or maybe clap along, but you hit me with some doob and doob. I love you. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, um, man, thank you. Love you too. And I and I picked this album uh, because when you did the goddamn comedy jam, you mm-hmm. sang Let's Groove. Right. Uh, very, very well. I had fun. That was that's that's all you know. It was just about having fun. A hundred percent, you're having fun. But I think that of all the Earth, Wind, and Fire songs, like that's the one uh, that I think was anybody can sing. It's just a lot of like, let's groove, <laughs> let's groove tonight. <laughs> what is your history with uh, with music? Like, like, did you grow up in a musical family or? I played drums. Were you playing drums as a teen, or, or is that no, something I, that started what? later? Uh, it started because my my parents are cheap. Because my my brother, uh, <laughs> he wanted to play drums, so they bought him a drum kit. Yeah. Right. And of course, you know, two years later, he's like, ah, I'm not playing drums. And uh, so when I came along, and it was you know fourth grade, and it's like, hey, let's pick pick an instrument. Which you want you want to play in the band? I was like, oh, I, I want to play the saxophone. And my parents like, no, 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 I, th- I think you're going to play the drums because we, we got this drum we kit. <laughs> we, we, are, we already invested in the drums. So that's what you're going to be playing, sweetheart. So And, and I, I stayed with it all through uh, all through high school. I all started to play school. in college. Yeah, I started to play in college. Have but... you ever played a ro- along to this record? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I grew up in a family uh, that listened to a lot of music. Okay. Like as a kid, I always remember, you know, music was playing throughout the house. You know, my what kind my, of stuff? Um, you know, my parent, my, my father was more into like the coasters. You know, uh, so what the doo wop stuff? Yeah, the doo wop very... coasters. Yeah. You know, all the you know the uh, 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 all that stuff. The uh, what was it? Was that a seal dying? Yeah, I don't know yeah. What the but fuck that, that, that noise that's was. what that that's that's what that guy <laughs> sounded like. He beautiful voice, but it was all that. Oh, 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 you oh yeah. yeah, it's like I'm a great pretender. All that stuff. Me. It was uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. So then, how did Earth, Wind, and Fire um, get into your life? My, and my mom, she liked, you know, like Aretha Franklin, Max okay. Knight, and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire, it, you know, the, the the radio, man. My brother and I, we were all into, um, like, bands. We loved the bands. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire, definitely, they, they, they were up there. That was the first album that um, I bought, yeah. This my record right I, here. My brother and I, we, that's the first album we we, we bought together. Tell it was me, like, so how old are we you? We were getting like little allowance, and, you know, and yeah. like little jobs around the house. And let me see, 75, so that meant that I uh, was, uh, uh, what, 11. Yeah, I was born in 64. Yeah, 11 years old. And uh, that was the first album, first album we bought. And I remember buying it at the record store and... Uh, I think it was a t- it was a Tower Records in Maryland. Yeah, we bought the record, got it home, unwrapped it. You know, I'm from you know. Maryland, right? You really? I didn't yeah, know I'm from I'm from Germantown, from Montgomery County. Okay. So so you're 11 years old when you first hear yeah. this record. Okay. Yes. So like, what's going through your mind? What's what's happening in your life? Like, how does this record affect you at that age? Wow. Okay. Um, 11. So that means what? I was in the sixth grade. Yeah. Right. Yes. Six. I think it's how old. Now, I mean, I started getting records around fourth grade. I mean, mm-hmm. my, my first one was "Licensed to Ill" uh, by the Beastie Boys and "Run DMC Raise in Hell." Okay. And I mean, I just remember how cool it was to get you. You know, it's like you're getting this record that, like, 
you know, uh, you hear it on the radio. We didn't have MTV yet. So it just, it touched me like, and really it was kind of what sparked like my interest in music. But you're 11 years old living in Maryland. You know, what happens to you the first time you hear Earth, Wind and Fire, That's the Way of the World? Just, it felt like, um, it, it, it hopeful and, and just love, you know, and it was, yeah, it, I don't it was just so uh, uplifting. It just this, just so freaking uplifting. And it just made you feel like, yeah, like you could do anything. Because it, it kicks off with, you know, Shining Star. And, incredible. Yeah. And it's just such, uh, just made you feel like you were important. This that is, you were, yeah. Yes, yeah this is, a this sense album, of, you know, the more I started researching it, and also I'll just jump right into it. Our album is number 486 out of 500. It's the 1975 album, That's the Way of the World by Earth, Wind, and Fire, produced by Maurice White and Charles Stepney and recorded at Burbank Studios and Caribou Ranch here in California. Now, I had never heard, like I knew the hits Mm -hmm. by Earth, Wind, and Fire, but Mm -hmm. this is the first record that I'd ever really listened to from them. And I think what you were saying about being uplifting, like this record is one of the most positive message every song is literally shooting star you can be anything you want to be that's the way of the world a baby's born beautiful Mm -hmm. you just it just keeps going and going with positivity and you know you said you're 11 i mean that's 1975 when this comes out i mean Mm -hmm. that's the end of the vietnam war Mm -hmm. america is just you know still kind of coming out of this shit and like you know race relations in america is still fucked up and then you have earth wind and fire that just drops this beautiful positive record right and you know so now that you're listening to it now Mm because i asked you to listen to it like how like what are you feeling from it now as you've listened to it more and more wow it's i i I go man i really wish we would have listened to that album and not just listen to it back then but i wish more people would have applied what they were singing about to their lives you know because if we would have just just you know a child is born with a heart of gold you know yeah. the way of the world makes his heart so cold i mean just just if if we would have just listened then we wouldn't be even if we start today and apply those those that message to our lives we wouldn't be in this this state we're in do you think you trump listens to earth wind and fire uh i think <laughs> trump just listens to fire that's it <laughs> <laughs> it's just the fire. Well, That's know, it. You know what I love about this record? I started doing some research. They recorded this with the intention uh, that the smoother pop choruses, as opposed to the hard R and B verses, would appeal to to more mainstream audiences. So, the engineer George Massenberg specifically was hired to give them a pop sound and gain acceptance and crossover because they wanted to make this big radio hit. Like this album is like they were specifically trying to reach a wider audience. So, really? So let me ask you. So See, to me, I, I didn't get that. I, well, I don't know. I guess we had to look at where pop music was back then. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe this was, I mean, did this cross over for them? Was this like a... Oh, yeah. This, yeah. this, this album won, yeah. won a Grammy. Right, uh, right, it's, right, it's, uh, right. I mean, this is really what, what took them kind of into to superstardom. I mean, right. for, for this band. Let me ask you a question. Like, do you remember having uh, like that crossover appeal moment in your career? Like where you were like, OK, so I've been I've been working, you know, I've been working in these audiences. Like, how am I going to like become a bigger artist and reach a wider audience? Hmm. You know, the, <laughs> at, um, I always started in in mainstream. I, I never, you know, started in. I, I didn't start in the Chitlin circuit. You know, I, in in DC, you know, I, I was in the mainstream clubs. I played, you know, the Comedy Cafe, Garvin's, um, and then the same thing when I got to New York. It was still mainstream audiences. I I never had that had that problem of you know finding the 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 masses you know it's funny I, I sometimes i look out my audience i go man it's really diverse but i could use a few more black people in here <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah because it's predominantly white and i yeah. go yeah it'd be nice to have if i could get you know like half and half or you know but so I, you, I love my audience the, of what, course what i have i love yeah. them but i go man i wish wish that you know some more black folks would catch on and you know see what i'm doing yeah 
What even something like when you were writing for the Chris Rock show and you did, you know, you played Biggie Shorty, my favorite role oh, of all time oh, Lord. from Pootie Tang. Uh-huh. I mean, that is like in a sense those those are like those are two things that were not oriented towards African Americans, but definitely had a lot of appeal. Like like I mean, did from doing some of those iconic things, like you didn't see your pulling from that or you've just always identified for like with a widespread audience? Yeah, it's pretty much been a widespread audience. I mean, I definitely gained fans from the Chris Rock show, but the same thing with Chris. Chris has a, you know, his audience is pretty diverse, too. Yeah, completely. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, let's, let's dive right into the record, okay? Nice. So, Shining Star is how this starts. And, I mean, I can imagine being 11 years old and hearing that bass line. Peter, play the bass line. <laughs> It's just fire because uh, it's like almost like when you hear this bass line, you know something is about to be super funky. That's but, that's and, I open on that show. Really? I mean, I open that song. Yeah, I walk out when I do my live oh, performances. I walk out on that. It, boom, 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 but boom, boom. the emphasis is not on funky. It's on fun. Yeah. Because you know that something is going to just rock. And just yeah. listening to Maurice's like singing where he's like, make your body big and strong. Mm-hmm. It's like, where the fuck did the cookie monster come from? <laughs> this is their first major hit. And we were talking about positivity. This is such a positive song where it's saying you can be anything you want. You know, it's even with the voices at the ending of all just those guys singing and clapping, so, like sample lyrics. So if you find yourself in need, why don't you listen to these words of heed? Be a giant or a grain of sand. Words of wisdom, yes, I can. Uh, when did you learn who Wanda Sykes really was, that you were unstoppable? Ooh. Like, when did you have a breakthrough moment, your shining star moment? Mm. I've had several. You know, I think I, I think it's like as as you go along. Like first, I'm like okay, uh, like in 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 school, you know, getting good grades. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, I can, I can do this. I can knock this out. Sure. Um. Then, uh, you know, to me, it's like it's it's a goal oriented song. Every time I, I I hit a mark. Yeah, you think about it and you're like, yeah, okay, got this. Or you or you face an obstacle. Um I, I guess it, but and then like we're always evolving too. So yeah. like I thought I I knew who I was when, you know, okay, hey, now career wise, I made it. I'm I'm doing stand up, I can earn a living as a comic, you yeah. know. Then you just it just keeps going, you know, um with different jobs and Doing the the correspondence associations <laughs> yeah. for, for President Obama, you know, the first time it's like, oh, okay, this is this is it. Um, definitely coming out, you know, coming out was was really when I said, oh, okay, this is this this is who I am. This is yeah, and unstoppable. Completely, yeah, completely. Yeah. Going then into that's the way of the world, another positive song. It opens with the chorus, hearts of fire creates love desire, take you higher and higher to the world you belong. What I love about this song is this, this is the first time I'm hearing Philip Bailey. Mm. And this is this is where I want to try to make a comparison is that you you have this band, Earth, Wind and Fire, right? And it's an ensemble of nine people where anyone on stage can get lost but you have these two distinct voices. You have Maurice White with that down low singing and then Philip Bailey with this incredible falsetto that I have no idea how Mm -hmm. any man can hit those notes. I mean, (laughs) let me try. Yeah, I just can't Uh do it. But Philip Bailey eventually went on to make some solo records and then he broke through and had a hit with Phil Collins' Easy Lover, which is, honest to God, one of my favorite songs in the... <laughs> but what I love is that it's it's just that Philip had felt overshadowed when you have such a distinct voice. You know, what was your easy lover moment? Like, what was yours? You're working for the Chris Rock show. You're working for these with these brilliant writers. You're an Emmy Award winning writer. 
Mm. Um, did you have an easy lover moment to break out of that? Wow. Um, you weren't expecting this. I mean, you I were probably thinking we were going to be talking about that. Verdine. I it's coming. Expecting. I did. I think. I think. Uh, yeah, I did have a moment with that. It was with the Chris Rock show. Um, I was so happy with the Chris Rock show. It's and, such and a brilliant it, show. It was a great show. Great show. Yeah. And it, it just seemed like there was there was a, a point where um, in, in our last season that. It, it was more a uh, competition, like everybody wanted to 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 get on, yeah. Instead of going, hey, let's put the best pieces out there. So it was more uh, politicking as far as come on, Chris, do this, do do this. And I was never one to like push, you know, my 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 ideas or whatever. Which wanna... is which is funny because you you I'm like I like I, one thing I love about you is that you 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 say what the fuck is up. You like yeah. you, you speak your voice. So to, I couldn't imagine you being in that situation, not being like, yo, this is we should follow this shit, you know, and oh, or this is a great idea. Yeah, like, I would say. Yeah, but I would definitely say, hey, this is funny. I like this one. This is fine. I would say that. But ultimately, it's it's his show. Right. So it's it's his taste and what, what he wants to put out there. Yeah. But to me, I just I just saw how people were pressuring him for their own things to get on. Completely. You know, and and you're working with your friends, so I, it it was just awkward, and, and and to me, it just felt like a time where, uh, we were saying, you know what, I'm I'm gonna go on and and do something else, and and different people were kind of like ready, to, but I, I was definitely ready to break off and say, okay, I'm gonna go do another, try something else. You're gonna try easy love. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Have an easy love moment. I love it. Yeah. Um, what I love about this song is you know there's some really really deep lyrics in this child is born we were singing this on the walk up to my apartment child is born mm -hmm. with a heart of gold listen now with a heart of gold way of the world makes his heart so cold mm -hmm. so that's saying that you when you're born you're this beautiful just just nugget of joy and love your your consciousness is completely clean you have no ego no nothing but then the regular world you know, rips that and turns it into something negative. So do you have a time in your life where a negative experience completely ripped apart your positive disposition? Oh, my God. Uh, what, well, you want to talk about yesterday? You or can tell me what, whatever no. you want to you can. It's whatever <laughs> no, way I mean, you want to go. It, but, oh, man. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always something, especially now with, with social media, too. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst. I, I'm literally thinking about like I need to, you know, I'll post some stuff and then just get the hell off of it. Yeah, I can't, you know, and and like it's it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in a good mood. I was, you know, like hey, um, just yeah, it was a good moment with my family, with my kids and all. Mm -hmm. And then then you look at at these little shitty kids taunting the the elder native american man yeah. man you know and, and you just go it, it just messes with you because they're kids and you go what the hell is our future looking like man yeah. with and it just breaks you you know it really does breaks you when you when you see stuff like that so how do like, you maintain faith in a world uh that is so negative you know that that where this child is now born is now you know got the heart of heart of cold then I I turn to other kids who I know who are doing beautiful things out there, who are, you know, trying to make the world a better place, and I I, I turn to those to those people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and then I just go, hey, hopefully these kids can beat the shit out of those other kids. <laughs> I think anybody can beat up that kid that, that was chanting in his face. I, I mean, that guy looks like he's... That's the problem, is that you look yeah. at somebody like that and you're like, that motherfucker has never taken a punch Not in his whole... All. I don't trust anybody that's never been punched in the face. You gotta get punched in the face. You have to get right? punched in the face. Uh, Happy Feeling, which is probably one of my favorite mm -hmm. songs on this record. Dun, 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 dun. Happy Feeling yeah. in the music. <laughs> I can't even do it. Play that part, Peter.
Dude, there was a fucking xylophone <laughs> solo in that. That's how dope uh, this is. Is that kalimba? Is that? Ding, ding, oh yeah, ding, Maurice. Ding, yeah, Maurice. Yeah, Maurice. Yeah, Maurice played that. It, I thought it was a xylophone. Look at you. But what I love about this song, it's another thing. It's about it's about talking about how to be present and enjoying life, mm-hmm. like as much as the other two records. Happy feeling in the music that we're given. Feel the power of yeah. the hour. Every moment that you're living. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what people weren't doing back then? What was up? On the damn cell phones, recording and, and listening to, you know, watching. It was just in it, in the moment, in the moment. One right? of the things Enjoying that. Enjoying it. Oh, completely. One of the things that I've been doing is I started reading, like, Eckhart Tolle. I started reading The Untethered Soul. I meditate to keep myself present, to stay uh-huh. away from my ego. Because basically, happy feeling is him saying, shed your ego right. and just be free. Now, was there a time in your life that you let your ego control you? Ooh. Yeah, it was. I was that? I that's when I was trying to do two shows at the same damn time cuz I thought like, yeah, what were the had, shows? I was uh The New Adventures of Old Christine. Okay. And then I I had my own show, The Wanda Sykes show on Fox, a uh, late night talk show. Uh once a week. Yeah. So, I was trying to do both shows and it all it broke me. It physically broke me. I like broke my foot doing tape oh, and, yeah like yeah. physically yeah man it, it, i'm gonna and, laugh and, at your foot pain but i wasn't no, expecting for, yeah, that everything yeah. started I, falling I, apart and, yeah <laughs> and then like my anxiety level went went nuts and shit i had to you know go to the doctor and stuff it was crazy yeah it was crazy and, and that and and only reason why uh it was totally ego it was totally because went on the way to doing that fox deal uh something happened where i, I didn't think i was gonna have the right people around me and i should have just said "Ah, you know what i'm not gonna do this show sure but instead i was like i I can do it i I don't do it come on i'm on the side i want to say i got this yeah i I don't need anything i don't need bite and man that yeah taught me a lesson so how did you get back to being present from that did you know just the shows ended or it was and then you were able to shows ended and and then and while it was happening of course i didn't I didn't realize what was going on, you know. I was blaming everybody. And then when it kind of like, you know, after the fallout and I just looked back and I was was very happy with with the product that I put out there. But I just looked at myself physically and my family and all and I was like, okay, all right. Whew, that was about ego. That's why you did that. You know, you didn't have to, you could have just waited and say, hey guys, let me finish this and then let's jump into this, you know, but. But you know what you learn your lesson. You learn your lesson, and and then what you did was you went to things that were all about love, which yes. is our next song, baby. All about love. Uh, my, all right. First of all, it's a beautiful song. Uh, the talking breakdown mm. where Maurice just lays it yes. all. Because Maurice, you know, he's he's studied. Uh, the cult. He studied cult science, astrology, mm-hmm. mysticism, world religion, and so, so he's, forth. That you did just. Oh, that's that's my favorite <laughs> part. Like you know, sometimes, baby, like have mercy. You know, you got to find your inner self. You dig? All right, baby. It says I love that so fucking much. Uh, but he says all these things that are right. We were just talking about ego, and he's like. Now there's an outer self you got to deal with, the one that that wants to go to parties, that that likes to dress up, be cool, cool, look pretty, and ego trips and all this. But man, you gotta love you, you. and all the beautiful things around, around you. you. He's a very spiritual uh-huh. person. Now, like I know your parents were both very religious. Mm-hmm. Like, did did that affect your spirituality as as you've become you? Or? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've always, you know, uh, been a believer and um, grew up in the church and all. And and of course, as I got older and, you know, in my own thing, I kind of stepped away, you know, uh, but always but still always believed, but just wasn't practicing and you know, going to church or, you know, or or, you know, reading or whatever. So um, but then, you know, I, I missed it. I really did. I was like, you know, I need to connect back into this this God, I need to connect. And uh, because it, to me, it's uh, not just t- to be a- aware of, 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 of yourself in the world and, and people, but also uh, it, it helps me to deal, yeah. you know, to, to go, whoo, okay, I'm not just doing all this 
uh, on my own, you know, like yeah. I like I I got I got backup, and and to me that's what I look at it as, and also you know now I'm trying to pass that on to to my kids too. Well, one of the things that stuck out to me is kind of following up that it's just that like you, it's about loving yourself. Absolutely. And and it's that's such a powerful message. Like I'm coming from my situation where. For so long, I didn't love myself. And now I, I'm like, I'm starting to through all the work that I'm doing. Um, but do you ever feel that you have to love yourself first before you can love somebody else? I mean, that's that's the right way to go about it. Sure. But of course, I, yeah, of course you can love somebody without loving yourself. Um but is but it really? It's, but it's a different but, love. I'm sure you know. What that, I was going to say is it real love though? Because you, you know you're almost putting them to make you feel whole. Do you know right. what I mean? Have you had situations like that before? Or? Yeah, but when you're doing it, you don't know that you you know you don't know it. You, yeah. You, when you when you feel like you love somebody, you you know it's lo- it's that love what you're experiencing, and then Completely. that it. But usually, and usually, what happens is that person tells you that. I don't feel like this love is enough. Like, you know, like the, the person will tell you, I mean, I've had that. I've had people tell me that um, it's you. Yeah. You say you love me, but I feel like if, if I, if I walked out this door right now that you'd be okay, you know? And I, yeah. and, and I thought, thought about it. And I was like, damn, you know what? Kind of got a point there. I, I you know, <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah, I think but I'd move on. I would, I would be like, I, yeah. like you know, next, mm-hmm, well, thank like, you, next. You know, but, but, um, but then, but when I, when you, so, so yeah, you do. And then I realized it, I had to do some work on my, on myself. What did you do when you said you worked on yourself? Um, just, I guess just, just figure out like what I wanted and, and fix some, yeah, fix myself, I guess. And, and I'll just be a little bit more honest with myself and more open, yeah open, you know? And then we, and then the next time, you know, like my wife, when I, this was it, I was like, okay, oh, so this is what this feels like. This yeah. is the, this, oh, this is how love is supposed to feel. This is so easy. I didn't know love could be this easy. Well, you had you had said like I I did I you know I saw the research you were married before right to a guy to, to a guy mm-hmm. so when you were in that situation did, is that what you're talking about yeah. was the love like he made you feel like you were you were okay like no everything's fine and then you know so that that's that's got to be like a heavy feeling you know to to be experiencing that and being like in a marriage and being like but I just don't know if this is like am I am I being true to myself. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. That too. But I really thought I was in love. Like, yeah, yeah. This I'm in love. Right. Yeah. I, well, I, I'm, no. Yeah. This is love. Mm-hmm. Right. And, <laughs> and and you don't know it. You don't know it until until you really find real love. But back then, I, I mean, I thought this is pretty much, I guess, what it has to offer. I mean, and it's not like uh, it's not like I was around a bunch of people who were also, you know, who were in love, but their love looked differently than what, you know, we were doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Dig it. Yearning, learning. This one's a header, man. Such a fun song. Yeah. This is this is also another one of my favorite songs on the record. Uh, it just it just pumps the chorus. Stop, look at what's behind you. Fame and love gonna find you. We're just here to remind you, remind you, yearn and learn is what you do. So let me ask you, uh, how did you think fame was gonna be? And now that you've and now that you're you're kind of in it, like how does that differ from what you actually thought? Hmm. I guess there's levels. I I didn't realize there were like the levels of fame. Yeah. You know, it's. I thought, hey, once people know your name and you're on TV, you must be famous, right? Yeah. And because uh, back then, 
Yeah, I mean, we didn't, we only had like what three channels. So if you, oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, so if you, if you were, if you were TV, on one of those so channels, you were, you were the shit. You were the shit. You yeah. were famous. So uh, it doesn't work that way now. This. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can, uh, which is great because you can you can enjoy your well, life. And who that, knows what fame is now? I mean, there's people that, that are making like we were talking about. Like if you if you have a social media presence and right? just posted a six second video, yeah. I mean, you could be a huge star. I mean, right? It's but has fame like when you were younger and you were working towards it? Like, did you did your perception of what fame really is? You know, is it has it changed or does it still feel like it was when you envisioned it? No, I think the way I thought about fame back then, uh, it was just way more glamorous and, you know, like Beyonce fame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's I mean, still I, levels of that, me, yeah. That's not what I want. I mean, I, I never... I would just love that you yeah. envision yourself being no, I on never, Beyonce level. No, but I never level. envisioned myself, I never envisioned myself as, as that. I, I, never, I never thought of myself or envisioned myself as being famous. So I always, were, always just thought of myself as I'm going to be a really good stand-up comic. For sure. But did you so did you have those aspirations, though, when you were younger? I mean, you what were you doing before you became a comic? Before I, I was working at the NSA. The National Security, the Security, Security Agency? Agency? Really? Yeah, yeah. You got clearance? Yeah, man. You still got it's, it? It's I bet they let hard. you in now because they'd be like, oh, yeah. man, fuck, it's, it's, it's Wanda, y'all. <laughs> just let her in. Show yeah. her the files, man. Show yeah. her the files. <laughs> So when you were working at the NSA, did you know, did you have those aspirations or you just felt unfulfilled? Or unfulfilled. You... Unfulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Looking back and and, and remember, like, I, just look, if I look back and... Look back, baby. And think about that song. You dig? I probably <laughs> did imagine myself being famous. Of course I did. You're a shining mercy. star and yeah. The well, fame. I probably knew that I would do something. I were think you, I did. Were you cracking people up at I like was. the cafeteria? I was. At the end. Yep. They're like, Wanda, we got to find yeah. out about what's going on in Istanbul. You're like, I know, but hold on, baby. Wait, I, I know Desert Storm, <laughs> Desert Swarm. All right, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah shocking all motherfuckers. All right, hold on. Yeah. Did you invite them when you started doing like the, because uh, you did some like comedy contests and stuff, I assume, like probably in the Washington, D.C. area. Yeah. Like, so did yeah. you invite a lot of the NSA people? I didn't. No, I why didn't. not? I didn't. I, I didn't. And when did I start inviting them out to the shows? Man, that was like late. I was well into it, before, you know, by the time I started inviting them to the shows. Really? My coworkers, yeah. And then when they saw you, they were like, girl, you ain't going to be working here long. They were like, <laughs> can I have your cubicle? <laughs> they were, yeah, they were pretty impressed. I know impressed. you're about to be gone. That's incredible. They were pretty impressed. All right, reasons. Uh, yeah. Another Philip Bailey stunner. Just yes. all falsetto. Uh, That's a panty dropper. It is a panty dropper, but this is also uh, one of the most misread songs out there. This is up there with like every breath you take, okay? Because people play this song. This is one of the most popular songs to play for the first dance at a wedding, right? Mm. But the song is actually about a one-night stand. Yep. Which is hysterical. Yes. Millions have played this as their first dance. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, is there something in your career, was there a situation that you completely misread? Hmm. I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty good. Let me try to think if there was something. Well, can, you know what? Maybe. <laughs> Hit me. Come on. Have maybe, mercy. Maybe it was... Uh... You dig? In Boston, I guess, right after the election. Oh, I think I've heard yeah. about this. Have you heard explain about that. Because I, I do. Yeah, cause I, at the, at the Dennis Jay Larson, thing. Jay Larson was on the show. Uh, so go ahead and explain okay. to everybody yeah, what happened. Dennis, please. At the Dennis Leary uh, Comics Come Home uh, a charity event in Boston, it was at the Garden. And so it was right after the election, you know. And so Dennis goes on, he's, he's doing, doing, he does. He's, you know, Trump jokes. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, cool. We can go there. We're good. We're good. Trump jokes. All right, cool. And uh, and then I forgot somebody else went on. They didn't do anything political. And then I go on. And it's, you know, it's a nice welcome. I do a couple jokes. And I do a, a Trump joke, you know, somewhat of a Trump joke. People laugh. And then I do something else and laugh. And then I said, uh, I can't remember. It was something about 
saying that he was a uh, uh, racist and sexist, whatever Trump. I said this is not the first time we've had a president who's racist and sexist. This is just the one that's been confirmed that we just know, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then they just started booing. So I misread that. I thought, you know, I can, you know, th- it was it was safe. People, you can we can make jokes, well, right? You can, you know, you can. Make jokes. People, people made Obama jokes. If you can shit on yeah. one president, people made yeah. Bush jokes. Yeah, we could we could do that. I mean, right. I remember when I started stand up, it was right at the tail end of the Bush administration, and that was everybody. Yeah. Now I know L.A. is a very you know we liberal leaning state. But if you went to D.C. where I started, they were making Bush jokes. Exactly. So, so then what exactly. happened then? Well, yeah, so it, the, the audience was completely divided. Half were clapping and cheering. The other half was booing. And then it got real ugly. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, people were, like, Hitler, high Hitler signs and, and, the, and the, you know, the N-word was flying. It was crazy. It was crazy. Well, I didn't and, hear that part. Oh, I just heard. Not, oh, there were I, fights. There were fights. People broke out in the audience. It was well, fights. I mean, yeah. this, this is, it was nuts. So, but I, I had heard. And I, I kind of like just mid read that. I said, oh, I thought, I didn't know. I didn't know we were here. I didn't know this. it could get this ugly. Yeah. You know, it was crazy. And somehow I was able to turn it around because I, I went back. To, I was Have like, mercy. okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> y'all. I said, look, 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 look. Okay. My bad. I, okay. I didn't realize that, you know that I wasn't allowed to do Trump jokes, you know, in, in other words, which saying, is complete bullshit in, in, because in you are saying, allowed okay, to do it. The white guys can do them, but I guess I'm not allowed to do it. That pisses so me then off. I, so then I, I pulled out my, my cancer card. I said, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm a, a survivor, uh, also a breast yeah. cancer survivor. And we're here for a good cause. And I brought it back around and then I did a, did a run about, you know, about breast cancer yeah, but- and, and I got the crowd back and then I left and I was like, okay, thank you. They was, you know, I had some applause. People were like, good night. And my wife, she was there. She ran out on the stage to grab me. Yeah. And like, just, you know, it just like gave me a big kiss on stage and it was like, okay, you know. This this she's ride or die. I like she this. She is ride, ride or, die. or I feel, die. I feel like if ever you have that cancer card, I feel like everybody in America needs to get a we survived Trump card when this <laughs> motherfucker gets out of office. Um so then it goes into Africano, uh, which is a great song, instrumental, funky as fuck. Uh mm-hmm. no words, which uh you just got to love it. I feel like that was Earth, Wind, and Fire's way of kind of being like, all right, this one's just for the brothers. Like, like we're doing an instrumental fuck white people. No lyrics, right. nothing. Just complete, like, Africano funk. But then you have See but the that's, Light. But that's right, the funny. Go. But that's when Africano, that's, that's when you said that they were trying to make a, uh, give them a pop sound. And like you said, then they just drop Africano. It's it's, it, it's them sticking it's, to the roots. It's going back to the yeah, to their roots. But to me, I never listened to this album and, and thought that they were going away from it. You know. Well, this is their yeah. this was their intention. Is okay. that they That's like cool. this is what from all the research they hired this producer to specifically just give them a sound that will will give them more of a mass okay. appeal. All right. And cuz they had been working with another producer prior to this uh-huh. and then once they weren't they were all mad at George Massenburg and when they finally heard the record but then when they saw what it did they were like all right we're going to work with you from then on out. Okay. Um I can see that. Yeah, yeah it's just it's just I mean sh- uh, Shining Star, I mean that was their hit. That was, that hit. was, that was a huge, huge hit. Yeah, they had never hit. had anything that that was that big. Right. Then they end the album on See the Light, mm. which at first it's like the beginning kind of like took me as like, I don't think I'm going to like it. But then as it kept going, I, I seem to enjoy it more and more. But as I what I really dug about this uh, is just I mean, this lyrically, like I kept saying, it's so positive. But he begins by seeking a solution to make the world a better place. He's like giving you all these instances. He's not seeking to blame this as being counterproductive. He looks within himself as a solution to end the world's woes. And I, I mean, some of the sample lyrics, uh, there's got to be a better way. Keep me, Lord, help me grow so I may reap the fruits of a free and happy soul. Help them see the light. Mm-hmm. Tell me about a time where you were in darkness in your career, and how did you find the light? Wow, uh, darkness in my career, or in life, dar- in, in life, life, whatever. It career. doesn't make a difference. Ooh. It's just, man. Um, I guess, yeah. You know, I, I go back to 
to to that time when it was I was doing those two shows at the same time. Yeah, I think it was then. I was just just doing too much. Over, sure. Yeah, over overworked and um, also with yeah. Just well, what about that, in like, life? Like you you were you were talking about about mm-hmm. cancer. My like my mom had breast cancer. Mm-hmm. I mean. How did that change you to get back to being such a positive person when you're dealing with something so heavy? I think because I have, you know, lost some dear friends to cancer and because I was diagnosed so early, you know, at the early stage yeah. that I, I knew I was going to be okay. So, um, although still scary and, um, uh, you know, and a, a, a rough process to go through and all. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't let it get me down because I knew how blessed I was that I that I caught it such an early stage. For sure. Completely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's. You want to do some facts, and we'll get you out of here. Okay. All right. Come what on. song should I sing with the facts? Uh, these facts, the facts that are true, the facts that do do. All right. Earth, Wind, and Fire got their name from drummer and founding member Maurice White's astrological sign. White's sign is Sagittarius, which has the primary elemental quality of fire and the seasonal qualities of earth and air. Earth, air, and fire didn't sound right, so air became wind. Which element best describes you and your life? Ooh. This is, most earth. of this podcast is you going, ooh. Earth. Mm. <laughs> uh-huh. Have mercy. Earth, why? I'm grounded, man. Yeah. I am. I'm I am very grounded. Um I think I am uh loyal. Um and uh yeah, and and I'm deep. Deep. You are deep. I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that deep shit. I'm deep enough. You're like you're not deep, like I'm deep like, enough. You're about like six feet in the pool. Like yeah, you yeah, can't dive yeah, in. Yeah, you can't yeah, dive right, in, but right, you can definitely wade right. in the water exactly. and like maybe yeah. put, lift your feet up and kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, and, and but let me ask you, how was your wife? What element would your wife be? My wife would be wind. Yeah, she's she's wind. She loves you know she can go over here she likes to you know she loves to loves to travel mm-hmm. she wants to even when she's one place she's thinking about where she could go to next place you know it's like she, she's hard she's always she's just she's a lot of movement with her so then so, so then it, like that's is that kind of what you know she's she's trying to pull this grounded person into being just a little bit more free absolutely you, yeah yeah that's beautiful yeah and it works yeah 100 percent. i'm fire that's what my acting uh, coach ex, says. I'm, I'm sure. 100% fire. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. I can also be ice cold. <laughs> this is all my acting coach says. Earth, Wind, and Fire is the first African-American act to sell out Madison Square Garden and to receive the MSG Gold Ticket Award. And when they won the Grammy for Shining Star, they also didn't bother going because African-American music at that point wasn't televised. Let me ask you. What was a personal or career milestone where you felt that you broke barriers? Oh, absolutely. The the White House Correspondents Association's dinner where uh for uh President Barack Obama that was during his first term and uh his first year actually it was the first one for him. And here I am hosting dinner and I am uh a woman, you know, African American and and a lesbian. So that was huge. Huge. Yeah. yeah. How'd it go? How was the set? I did okay. No, <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> you crushed it? I crushed it. Was there anybody in the audience that, like, you know, when you met, you were just kind of like, holy shit. I mean, besides Obama, I mean, but, like, anybody else that you saw that was just like, oh, my God, that's fucking, you know. Yeah, I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, my God, there's, Col- there's Colin Powell and, and uh, Madeline Albright and uh, what? Is that a Kardashian? What the hell is the Kardashians doing here? <laughs> They're everywhere, dude. They're everywhere. They're like Chipotle. Yeah. They're yeah, everywhere, exactly, dude. Exactly. The Kardashians are everywhere. Yeah, Bon Jovi. I'm like, I met Bon Jovi that night. It was cool. Did you riff on any of the people, or was it just like? Uh, no, I stuck to the script. I knew what I was gonna, what I had. I knew the jokes that I was gonna do. And do you remember uh, any of the jokes? Uh, I remember a joke I did about the first lady. Um, yeah, something about um. When they met met the queen, 
Yeah. And she went and hugged the queen. And I was like, what? what? And everybody gave her gave her shit because it's like, you're not supposed to touch the queen. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know, I said, <laughs> I said we have to give you a book or something that you can read, read up on the rules. I said, you know, you over there touching the queen, you know, patting her on her back like she just slid in the home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Queen. Wait, That's so, hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. All right, here we go. That's the way of the world was the soundtrack to a movie of the same name, starring a young Harvey Keitel as record producer and Earth, Wind, and Fire as the group he worked with. The movie was a colossal flop, but the album, of course, was a hit. Have you seen it? There was a, a there's a movie. movie. This is this is actually the soundtrack. So the director of the movie Superfly made this movie and uh it's called that's the way of the world and so this album was created as the soundtrack oh wow but it was a huge flop okay were there any situations where the project flopped but you didn't the project flopped and i didn't yeah i did this show with um it, it was it was right after the chris rock show it was called the downer channel and it was something steve martin uh, produced and you know, I had this great meeting with Steve Martin I mean come on of course yes I, I want to do this show and so I was part of the cast and uh and Steve wanted to do, do exact, like a little sketch show but it was all about the things in life that brings us down okay you know it was it was weird so you know yeah tried it and it did not do well at all but people the, the they liked me. They loved you. Yeah, well, you're very lovable. Me. Yeah, they loved me and uh, who else was on? Uh, 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 Marilyn Rice Cup. She is the best. Yeah, she's on that show. She is too. what I've. She actually owns her and her husband own a gym out in uh, I want to say like Tarzana, Reseda area. Okay. And I'm such a huge like not just fan. I'm a fan of hers because of uh, because of Mr. Show with Bob and David, but yeah. uh, I become friends with her because we've been, we've been doing spots together at the comedy okay. store, the improv. She's done the jam, uh, but me and another buddy went there to go to her gym. She dude, it's like it's like high intensity interval training and right. it's just fantastic. We're all going we're all going to go together. Okay, I'll try we'll it. Bring I'll you, give it a shot. We'll bring you we'll bring your windy ass wife. Okay. It's going to be the best. <laughs> Blow her ass Blow in her there. Blow her ass in there. Okay. All right. Um Miles Davis described Earth Wind and Fire as his all-time favorite band, saying they have everything, horns, electric guitar, singers and more, all in one band. What is a compliment that someone you respect has given you that blew you away? Hmm. I know. I'm always. I'm just. Hmm. hmm. Have mercy. Uh, Eddie Murphy. He's when I, I when I met him. Uh, he said, "Hey, you that funny lady." That's all I needed for him to say. That is all you need. Yeah. All right. Well, let me ask you. Uh, what comedian or artist do you think has the complete package? Just like Miles Davis said about Earth, Wind, and Fire. It was a complete package. Wow, it's the complete package. I this um um well I guess I guess you gotta say I guess you gotta go with Jordan. You just gotta go with Jordan Peel, right? Yeah, he, I mean completely right, the guy's direct, comedian he's he, Yeah, right, direct, produce, you know. Yeah. I was hoping you were gonna say me. Sketch, everything. I mean he does it all. Yeah, completely. Um, I was really hoping I mean, you were going to say one, me. I mean, that's one. I'm sure I can name a bunch of other ones, but. Here we go. Maurice played the kalimba or African thumb piano, as you were talking about, which I thought was a xylophone. Many, many likely assumed it's something he started with the musical ex explorations of Earth, Wind & Fire, but he played it as far back as the 1960s in Ramsey Lewis Band. Um, Sun Goddess. On a scale of blackness, how black is this group and why? Oh, my God. This is, they're off the charts black. <laughs> it they're, please they're, tell. They're, they're, they're blackity black black. How they're, black? Like, give me, 10, I want all 12, the, they, this was written, this question was written. I have my uh, my producer, David, uh, Big Black Beautiful David. Uh, he wrote that. So why, explain in detail why Earth, Wind, and Fire is at that complete level of blackness. We got afros. We got chest hair. Shirts open, chest hair. We have uh, 
like the, just the drums, you know, come on, they, they, the Africano on, on the, the album that they want to be, be a crossover. Yeah. Um, the costumes. They, yeah, the costumes. The costumes the, are incredible. That's what I'm saying. The costumes. Prince, uh, if I don't know if this is right, but Prince actually uh, either used the same guy that did their costumes or he was heavily influenced from their costumes to make the Purple Rain costumes. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the, just the, 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 the music, the instrumentation, the, to, to have nine dudes on, a, on the stage together. Yeah. You know, um, uh, well, just, yeah, the, the message in their, in their music, you know. Which the, is, but that's the thing is that, like, is, is that, because we talked about this a little bit earlier, but is that, that message is not normal from what's coming out in not just music, but like we can say specifically like black music in the seventies. I mean, you have like Curtis Mayfield around that time, you know, it's, you know, talking about like pusher man or, or, or Superfly. I mean, there's, there's, they're definitely doing something different. So, so like, how is that? And then look at where some of the music has changed. And I'm not just talking about black music. I'm talking about white music. It's just like, there's not that much, music out there that is this positive yeah they they were doing the the music um the the band of uh uh, uh of what like what like stevie wonder and, and marvin gay and and all those yeah. you know all those those conscientious uh you know uh artists but they were just doing it in a band you know incredible yeah all right final question then we'll get you out of here um and so this was not this is not more of a fact but i really want you to tell this story uh, and you were talking about nine members on stage. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire guested on Wu Tang Clan offshoot <laughs> Sons of Man's 1998 debut album, what? The Last Shall Be the First. When I we didn't were, know that. We, wow. I know, it's incredible. When we were at the jam, you told me a story about you with Wu Tang. Yeah. Would you mind telling me that? I was at the House of Blues. Please. Right. <laughs> so. Lance Crowther, who is the the biggest Wu Tang fan on the planet, that's the guy who plays Pootie Tang. So um, we were at the House of Blues, and uh, so we sat through. They were doing two shows, right? So we had the first show, and we just that's, that's when uh, uh, Iron Flag just came out. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're out there, you know, boom, 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 just just rapping along, you know, and. Uh, I think you got looked out and and looked at and kind of like recognized us. Probably He's like, is that probably, Biggie Shorty? Probably, probably, I was like, I think that's Biggie Shorty Pooty Tang out there, right? So then, uh, so we, we you know jammed along with the show and uh, and then the, you know Chef looked over and was like. I was like, Lance, they're looking at us. They're looking at us. And he was like, I think so. I think so. I think so. So after the show, we kind of like, you know, slow to, you know, get our stuff together. And you guy comes over to the gate. And he's like, yo, 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 Pootie, yo, yo, yo. And we looked up and he was like, waved us over. So now we're backstage, right? And the yeah. first show, Method wasn't there, okay. right? Method wasn't there. So we uh, were backstage, hanging out with them, just kicked it. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, you know, talking, talk, just it, 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 to Ghostface, and I'm like, I'm rapping shit to Ghostface, and you know, his 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 uh, uh Maxine. Nice I'm shoes, doing, Master yeah, Killer. Yeah, I love I'm, that I'm, jacket. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing Maxine to to uh, to, to to Ghost, right? So. Um, and uh, you know we talking about uh, uh, Cuban links, all that stuff. So we, so we just like just kicking it, kicking it. Of course, smoking and 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 then I tell them, I said, hey, if y'all need somebody to do ODB's uh, verses, I got all that. I got all that because you know, shame on you, shame on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the one man army. It's all. I never been taken out. I keep MCs looking out. Yeah. So uh, that's the greatest and, thing. And they're the like, uh, yeah. So they all cracking up, laughing. I'm just, you know, just getting so faded. So then, uh, like, Marshall Falk somehow comes out. He, he he's back there. I'm like, what the fuck, Marsh Falk? Doing? And uh, and and then. You know, Chris Rock, he shows up and he's hanging out. He's like, oh, God, look at you. Like, I don't mess by now, yeah. right? So, um, and then Ghost walks in. Ghost, Ghost, make, Ghost makes, makes it in time for the, the second man? show. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, Method Man, Method Man shows up. So now, 
They're like, Raekwon's like, come on, we got, we got to do this show. You know, come on, Jake. So, so everybody's walking to the stage. And they was like, y'all come on out and hang out on stage with us. I'm like, yes, yes, that's what I want. So so the show's starting, and I'm in the, you know, in the background, standing along with, with Chris and Marsha Falk and, and, and Lance. We're How many people there. are on stage? Cause about they, fifty. Because I've seen Wu Tang. Yeah, I, I they think, got kids up I think, there. I think even Capadonna was there. You know, <laughs> Capadonna yeah, was yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, always. Yeah. He needed so to be there. Everybody, you know, just it's, everybody's on stage, and then you have the us, the the, the you know, the extra extra crew. Like who these hoes are? Yeah, yeah, in the <laughs> Look at this right. girl. She's short yeah. as fuck. Yeah. So we the wrong man on. We, you know, so we back so back there and. Um, uh, and then, it, it, you know, I, I feel like, oh, they're they going to kick an ODB song now. So I'm start moving my way to the to the front, walking my way <laughs> a little bit closer. <laughs> and Chris just grabs me and pulls me back, you know, in line with them. And I'm like looking at him, you know. So then another song comes on. And I'm like, oh, damn, I'm going to hit the ODB part. <laughs> so I'm, I move. I start waiting to the front. And Chris grabs me again, pulls me back. And I just look at him like, motherfucker, if you don't get off of me, you know. I, and uh, I think like two songs later, I was like, yeah, they was like, let's get her out of here. Oh, it was let's, that let's, bad? Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was like, let's get her out of here. But that was a great night. I, I was so bad that on the way out, um, uh, Macy Gray was on her way in. And she looked at me. She was like, you fucked up. I was like, oh, damn. This is a whole new level. <laughs> When Macy Gray tells you you fucked up, and she was fucked up when she told me I was fucked up, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I need to put me in a car, get me home. I love you. We got to get you home you too, now. Man. Thank you, Wanda, for coming on. Uh, this you. was fantastic, though. Thank you. Wanda Sykes, y'all. For all things Wanda Sykes, go to her website, wandasykes.com. That's where all things Wanda exist, all her tickets, everything. And if you want to find her on social media, it's at I am Wanda Sykes. Big news for Wanda. She's shooting her Netflix special in New York City, February 28th and March 1st at Town Hall. There are still tickets available if you want to go. So go, because she is fucking hilarious. I'll be posting her mixtape track listing link uh, on all social media. And if you guys want to email the podcast, once again, you can find it at 500podcast at gmail.com. Follow me on all social media at Josh Adam Myers. Got some dates coming up that are pretty big. February 26th, I've got Shimmy Shimmy Ya at the Comedy Store in the main room, 1030 show. It's where comedians give away real shit from their lives to members of the audience. It's so much fun, and you should be there. March 20th, the goddamn Comedy Jam is going to be at the Roxy, the world-famous Roxy, which is fucking cool, man. I, I got to tell you this. Anytime I, I do the Roxy, you go into the... the uh, the VIP green room. I don't know if you want to call it that, like where the artist chills. And there's a picture of Bob Marley and John Lennon talking exactly where you're standing, looking at that picture. And my fucking dumb ass is up there. And I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? My life. All tickets are at my website at joshadammyers.com. I got to update the website. So, you know, it'll be up there. Just search for it. And for all things 500, guys, if you want to find the mixtape track listing, guest episodes, everything, the artist of the week, it's all at the website at the500podcast.com. And like I said at the beginning, guys, subscribe to the 500. Please rate and review. If you dig this shit, man, do me a favor and do that, man. I'm trying to get more people to listen to this show, guys. I want more members of the fleece 
army. We need you guys. Also, we've got a Patreon. It's called The 500 Club, guys. We're giving away merch and live chats with me and my guests, and we're going to be coming up with a brand new podcast that is going to exist only on the Patreon. If you sign up, you get it on Tuesday. Not on Wednesday. You get it on Record Store Tuesdays, okay? So join the movement. The 500 Club is the shit, guys. You can find it at the500podcast.com backslash club for all details on Patreon membership options to support the 500. I think what we're going to do is if you sign up for the Patreon, not only are you going to get a whole nother podcast with probably like me, Morty. Big shout out to Morty, guys. Morty is my fucking boy. Morty has been going on this journey with me, doing a lot of the research, him and Dave Ross. But I fucking love Morty, man. Follow him on social media. He, like, likes all my shit. So give Morty a big shout out and tell him he's doing a good job because he's batshit crazy. But I think we're going to do a supplemental podcast with him and Avery and Ryan Sickler and just some of the other guests. We're going to talk about some stuff. It would probably be good with just me and Morty because me and Morty just have such intense conversations. Go to the Kibitz Room every Tuesday night. He's the leader of the Fockers, Friends of the Kibitz Room. It's a great jam session. I love him to death. Morty, I know you're listening. I fucking love you, buddy. But join the movement, guys. We're going to give you patches that say Fleece Army. We got Fleece Army t-shirts. It's going to be incredible. Now, we just listened to Earth, Wind & Fire from 1975. Here is an artist that is directly influenced by this album. From London, England, we have Jungle with their new single, Beat 64, All Good. Listen to this song, guys. Do not tune out. This shit is catchy as fuck, and I know you guys are going to love it. If you're in a band and were directly influenced by one of these albums or artists that we have on this list, and you want your music featured at the end of the 500, send your song to 500podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you put the album and the artist that influenced you in the subject line. The reason I'm saying that, guys, is I want to launch artists, man. As this show gets bigger, I really think that we can find these bands, these artists that are are struggling to get the fucking music out. And I want the 500 to be a launching point for them. So send me your music. Don't be afraid. I don't give a fuck if you made it in your parents' basement. I don't give a fuck. If it's, if it's fucking some weird bluegrass electro, if you love it and you wanted the world to hear it, let the 500 be the catalyst to get it out for you. Send us your goddamn music. Next week is Pearl Jam Week with their 1994 record Vitalogy. So you guys got some homework to do. Stay fleecy, y'all. Peace.
video stop. Please don't stop. The video stop. Please don't stop. The video stop.